Okay, good morning. I'm going to get myself started at this. I hope we're all settled in. So, welcome indeed to the first App Developer Con in Europe. It's amazing to have you all here. Fantastic. So, I'm going to be your host today. Um, my name is Mark Fussell. I'm one of the program chairs of App Developer Con. Um, I'm also a maintainer on the Dapper project for CNCF, um, and I'm also the CEO of Diagrid. And I hope we have a very exciting lineup for you today. Um, the premise of this talk um, and why are we here is about a year ago, we went to CNCF and said, look, there are all these people that turn up that want to talk about developers and how you build applications. Um, and you know, we need a forum to talk about this. And in fact, you know, if you actually look at the CNCF stats themselves from the last two KubeCons, you'll see that you know, over a third of the people that turn up are developers like yourselves, um, architects as well. And you know, there's a lot of discussion around infrastructure and um, optimal environments and how we you know, build the distributed systems. But how much do we talk about the applications design themselves? How do we talk about you know, the business that has to be you know, built by you as a developers, by architects? And how do we have a forum to discuss that? And in fact, if you dive into those numbers, you know, a large number of people turn up, like yourselves here, wanting to talk about full stack development or back end distributed systems. So that's the premise of App Developer Con. You meet like minded developers, we talk about architecture, we talk about the application design themselves. I'd like to kind of introduce you as well to the other people who are in the program committee. Um, I was trying to look out for them if they were here, but if Roland, Savita, or Valentina are here from Red Hat, they. Um, along with myself and Mauricio from Diagrid and Paul from IBM formed the program committee. We were lucky that we had uh, 150 submissions, which is a huge number to go through. Um, we go through a range of different topics. We try to kind of spread across the spectrum of everything from development tools to deployment to how you do patterns for design, the use of libraries, serverless, eventing-based paradigms. Um, Certainly, we're interested still in app migration. There's plenty of that still happening today, and we have one of those great talks that covers that. I wish there was a little bit more AI in some of the um, CFPs that were submitted um, in terms of how it's actually being used today. Um, we got a few of them, but not as much as I expect to have. And then we always try and do a little bit of future-looking stuff. So this is a sort of idea of the talk. Um, you know, we welcome you that we'll hopefully hold this again. In fact, we will be holding this again in North America and, of course, you know, all the subsequent um, app developer cons uh, that, and kube cons from now on out. So I encourage you to submit CFPs themselves about um, for talks that you would like to hear at these. So thank you for the committee. Thank you for those people going through these. It takes a lot of effort and a lot of energy. And you know, hopefully we've inspired you by picking a set that will you know, help you think about your application design and take this forward. So if we sort of dive in a little bit more about, you know, what is it we actually mean, you know, I thought I'd just draw out sort of a classic cloud native architecture, you know, the combination of externalizing some APIs, you know, using that through policies um, and API gateways to, to in order to um, you know, make sure that you have external APIs exposed to your end users. Typically, of course, increasingly we see that built upon sort of platform APIs around service discovery and identity. And then particularly, of course, you know, the application architecture itself. What are the architectures application? How do we put those patterns together? And how do we take advantage of backing services? All sort of stitched together effectively with you know, CICD pipelines and deployments and all the things you need to actually get your code in place. And what that means is you know, diving into sort of some architecture discussions. You know, yes, we can talk about the monolith. <laughs> it exists. It's a great application design. But you know, this is CNCF. You know, we sort of like to break those things apart. You know, we like to build it into other architecture designs. Certainly, you know, the rise of sort of microservices as the de facto pattern, event-driven applications, and putting those all together. So this is a kind of a celebration of that and how we put those together. And then, you know, when you look inside the application itself, you know, what are some of the, the patterns that put that put the applications together? How do we think about messaging? How do we think about building stateful, long-running, durable applications and sharding? building resiliency with throttling retries and circuit breakers. And certainly, you know, how you then put together other patterns that put you in the place of the application developer thinking about how is it you design scalable systems. 
Certainly one of my favorite I see all the time is, you know, we talk a lot about distributed applications, but, you know, the coordination across them and how you actually build um, distributed systems where you actually make sure that you deal with compensation and failovers and um, the recovery from them, you know, the saga pattern around those. We see a lot of this where people simply write their code and then have to fall into place about how they stitch all those applications together. Um, so I see a lot of that happening. I'd love to kind of hear from you about, you know, do you incorporate workflow engines into your design, how you put your code together? Um, and so this is a uh, captured in sort of the talks that we do. But, you know, building these systems is complex. Um, in many ways, there's complexity in two angles. There's complexity of the business itself. I mean, we shouldn't be scared to affect, say that enterprise applications are complex. But then there's sort of complexity of the technology and how we put it all together. And it makes our job difficult. But you know, the challenge for us as developers is that we love to build abstractions on top of complexity. And in fact, that's exactly what we should be doing. So you know, as we evolve these distributed applications, we should be looking for abstractions to help us not reinvent a pattern. There is so much time that we rebuild things and rebuild platforms when we really should be building on the business logic itself. So let's think about those abstractions. How do we make things easier for ourselves in a sea of complexity? At the same time, let's not stifle innovation. Uh, we have to have innovation. We want to build new things. We want to build new technologies. But along with innovation, at some point, you have to get to some agreement around things. In many ways, sort of Kubernetes has become an agreement around what you do at the hosting level. For me, I think the agreement around open telemetry that happened over the last five years where you know, we went from a diversity of different monitoring, diagnostics, tracing tools to a single protocol has helped enormously in terms of how we think about designing systems. And I think we should do that in other places as well where we can, given the fact that you know, there's a complex world of different technologies we have to put together. So with that, I just thought we'd just do a little kind of exploration about, you know, what the audience was like, who we are today, and the, who, um, you know, where have you all come from? So I'm going to ask you a few questions, and let's kind of discover a few things about where our background is. So first, I'd love to, quote, to ask you, you know, let's talk about languages, because that's the easy one. So how many people here program in Java? Oh, it's a good number of hands, I expected that. How many do JavaScript? Okay, Python, oh, C Sharp, another C of hands, Rust, oh, <laughs> Go, oh, right. any language I should have said? M Sharp. <laughs> M Sharp, okay, yes. <laughs> All right, actually, that was a pretty good mixture. Um, how many use more than one language? Oh, wow, yes, okay, that's what, that's what increasingly I'm seeing as well, like the combination of languages, putting them together. All right, okay. How many of you are involved with a platform engineering team or are a platform engineering team? Oh, okay, just a few hands. Okay, yeah, so you mostly depend upon other people doing that job for you, hopefully, or you're part of them. How, how many of you deploy to more than one public cloud? Okay, so I should have used the rest. How do many of you just use a single cloud? Okay, so most people still use a single cloud. Okay, I mean, it's just a good feeling for what, you know, the type of uh, things that we build, the, uh, the challenges we face and kind of hearing, you know, from you. So, you know, for me, you know, I picked out a few trends that I think are interesting. You know, we tried to reflect these in the session. I think there's a whole interesting world of security out there where we're pushing security back into the application, the whole shift left movement. You know, not only just scanning software and infrastructure's code, but what is the application secure as? You know, what is the lockbox inside the safe, inside the lock room, inside the castle, behind the moat? You know, we all care about the moat, but getting inside the castle, you, know, you could still steal all of your crown jewels, as it were. So, you know, we've got to look at the, the application security itself more in depth, and how is it that we make sure that we do security between services themselves? I think there's a lot to explore around the observability and sort of chaos engineering space. Um, how is it that we understand the end-to-end -end system and see the diagnostics? I mean, effectively, observability is the lifeblood. You know, if you don't have observability in your distributed application, you're effectively walking blind in the world. So understanding how we incorporate that into our application design is important. Working with those platform development teams and internal developer platforms, effectively, we see more and more now that most organizations are having two or more of something. Um, so consolidating those around and providing that abstraction layer around them. 
And then I think there's a strong world of like the multi-platform, multi-runtime, and multi-language emergence. Um, there was a world where you know, a lot of the cloud providers said, here's the platform or the paths that will run all your code. Turns out it doesn't work like that. And you know, typically you have to choose the platform as the best choice where you run your code. You have to choose the runtime as well. And as you just demonstrated, you know, a combination of languages put it together. And so there's this world now with you know, multi-paths platform and multi-runtime and multi-language and how we shape that and put that together in a, in a way that um, doesn't breed that complexity and also doesn't breed that deployment nightmare, um, I think is something interesting to explore. That leads on to sort of cloud portability. I asked a multi-cloud question just because increasingly both through legislation and lack of vendor lock-in and the idea that you can move your code around, you know, cloud portability, whether it's on-premise to the cloud or multi-cloud is increasingly emerging. And finally, you know, I wouldn't be um, behooved to say that, you know, AI is affecting many of the roles that we're building inside applications themselves. And in fact, the blending together of building small and more discrete models and putting that with procedural code, I think is an emerging topic. And I'd love to hear more of that in terms of discussions that we have here in future. So if you put this all together, I think we have an amazing lineup of sessions covering across sort of polyglot application development, uh, across, you know, a bit of migration and developer tools. And, you know, hopefully you get from this you know, a wealth of knowledge and things to take away. I thought I'd just pull up this one little fun example that I came across the other day of sort of the use of observability, as I call it, in power transmission. And this company called Himdel, you know, they looked at power systems and from where the energy was generated into, into where it was distributed was complete lack of observability. They had no idea what was happening on the power lines. And it turns out that if you simply know the temperature at each of the power line points along the whole distribution, you can actually effectively optimize how you distribute the energy, including shutting down in tower power lines because you can push more energy down through a particular um, cable because the cables, as they get warmer, sag more, or as they're cooler, can take more energy through them. So they literally drop these observability balls down the power light line, and now they can simply see the temperature along the whole power light pipeline and effectively observe their application end to end, in this case, power distribution, and shut things on and off. And I thought it was an interesting example of putting together, you know, IoT observability and thinking about sort of, you know, how you see what's happening inside your systems. So with that, you know, I'm going to close this out. I deeply want to thank all the sponsors for this. Um, sponsors are an important part of getting these co-located events running. I want to thank our diamond sponsor, Heroku. And along with that, our two platinum sponsors, Diagrid and Dagger. Um, they all have tables outside. I encourage you to go and visit and have a conversation and find out about them. Um, I've been asked to make sure that you're aware of making sure that the, we treat others with respect in the code of conduct of CNCF. And there are snacks outside at the end of this event. There is actually a co-located event that happens on level 7.1 that you're all welcome to attend. And apparently there's little signs outside that you can write, I'm a Java developer on, and you can go and find other Java developers and rush around. Um, and finally, I wanna leave you with a survey. Um, we have gotta try and improve these things. We have gotta make them better. Either visit the bit.ly link at the bottom there or scan this QR code. But please, please, we'd love to hear from you. What is it important for you? What is it you want to see at future events like this? How is it we can make this better? In the end, you know, application developers, I believe, are the heart blood of cloud native computing because if you don't build an application, what do you sell to make money? So here we are gathered together and hopefully you've been inspired by today. So thank you.